Hi there, my name is Evan Weiss and I'm a sales engineer at Retool. Today I'm going to walk you through how to build a simple dashboard on top of AWS Athena. Amazon Athena is a serverless query uh, application that allows you to process large amounts of data uh, to get information about um, things as diverse as log files, um, other uh, database records that might be sitting in a data warehouse. Uh, today we're going to be looking at an Athena dashboard that's built on top of S3. Uh, and we're storing some elastic load balancer logs in S3, so we want to do some querying on a large volume of them. So the first thing I want to do as I'm building up this dashboard is connect Retool to Athena. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to show you how an Athena resource is configured. So in Retool, what we need to do is put in an output for the query results uh, that we're going to run. Uh, S3 is where we're going to put those. We'll also specify a region, uh, an AWS access key, and a secret ID. And that's all the information that Retool would need to make the connection. Uh, once we set that up, we can now start to write queries uh, to get data from Athena. So what we're going to do here is populate a table uh, with information about the, uh, the ELB logs that we've collected. So I'm going to bring in this table component into my canvas. And what I'm going to want to do is set up some pagination for the results uh, in this table because um, I think there's something like a million records in uh, that Athena has access to. And if I just did like a select star, um, it would maybe uh, make my UI run very slowly. So I'm going to want to paginate based on the number of records that can be displayed in this table. So the first thing I want to do is set up that pagination in the table. Uh, and to do that, we'll go into the add-on section of the table configuration to enable pagination. Um, then what we'll do is remove our default page size. It's going to make our page size dynamic based on the height of the component. So you can see that it fits 10 records. Um, Retools calculated that for us. And then we'll also want to enable server-side pagination. So when we do this, what we need to do is figure out how many rows there should be in the table as a whole, uh, because otherwise we can't display how many uh, pages of data are available. Right now we're just saying there's 10 results, but there could be more. And in fact, in the sample data set, there are more results. So to do that, we'll write a quick query to get the total number of records that exist in our data set. So to do that, we'll do a simple select star. So we'll do a count star, because we want number of records as count from sample DB, which is our sample database, and we'll look at, again, ELB logs. So we'll go ahead and run our query. We should get back the number of records. And in this case, we can see there are um, 1.3 million records, so definitely want to paginate them. So we'll save our query, and we'll name this the get request count query. All right, so now what we can do is put this information into our pagination settings. So we'll reference the get request count data. And we can see inside of that data, there is a count array. And we actually just want to access the uh, first element in that array. So now that's how we get our 1.3 million records uh, into this component. And that's going to allow us to populate this information on in the bottom and start to do our pagination. The next thing we need to do is write a query that's going to consume the pagination information from the table to get just the records that we're paging through. So if we take a look at our debugger, uh, we can see how our table component exposes information about pagination state. So if I look at the state manager, we'll see that our table has information under a pagination key. It's got the current page, the page size, and the offset. And that is going to allow us to set up a limit offset pagination style. So to do that, let's go ahead and write a second query. And this is going to be get requests. So get us the actual request records to display in the table. And now what we'll do is uh, a select. And in this case, we just want to get a couple of specific uh, fields for our table. So I'm going to bring those in. I'm just going to copy this in from uh, another query that I've written. Uh, but now let's set up our offset and limit. So we'll say um, we'll order by the request timestamp uh, descending. So we'll get this in reverse chronological order. And then we'll set our offset. And we'll get our offset from our table one dot pagination dot offset. And then we'll also set limit based on, you, got, you guessed it, table one dot pagination dot limit. Uh, where is that? Oh, uh, limit actually is going to be the page size, rather. All right, so you can see again, this evaluates to 10 because that's the number of records that fits in our page. And our offset right now is zero because we're on the first page. So we can go ahead and run that. That's going to come back with 10 records based on this. You can see them here. And now we can update our table to display that data. So we'll come in here, go to our data source, and use get requests. 
So you can see this brings the data in automatically and we show now 14 records. And this is interesting actually, because uh, the height of the rows, um, the way that this is formatted, the same real estate that we're using for this table, but used to fit 10 records, now it fits 14. And so you can see again that um, our pagination, because it's set up automatically, that information has been updated here. So it's got a page size of 14. Um, this makes it really resilient to changes in the height of the component. So as I make changes to this component, that page size uh, parameter is going to update and keep our query logic working correctly. All right, so, so far so good. Uh, we set up some server-side pagination to display these records. Uh, the next thing I want to do is set up some filtering. So maybe we're only interested in, uh, in requests or in, in logs that have a specific ELB response code. Um, and so let's go ahead and set up a dropdown that will allow us to filter based on that. So I'm going to bring in a multi-select component. This will allow us to choose multiple values in the dropdown. Um, and we're going to go ahead and style this. So we'll remove our label um, since we don't have that many to work with. And then we will put our uh, placeholder as select response code. Uh, select response code. Uh, in fact, let's make this a single select. I think that's going to be easier to work with for our example here. So I'm just going to swap this out to be a, um, a single select component. Um, and this will be our response code select. All right, so we got this going here. Um, now, you can see that we've got some default options, uh, but we want to actually replace this dynamically based on the response codes that are available in the data set. So let's write a Athena query uh, to get that information. So we'll make a new query. Um, this will be get response codes. And this one's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, we will just bring this in from an existing query. Uh, we'll just get those distinct ELB response codes from the sample database and order them in um, alphabetical order. So there we go. Looks like we have 200, 301, 302, 404, and 505. So we can populate our response code select dropdown using a mapper. So the data source we're going to pick is get response codes. And we'll be mapping in the item.elb response code. So now it's going to populate with the available response codes. All right, so we've implemented our response code select dropdown. Now the next thing to do is to update our query logic so that we can filter down the records that are displayed in the table to only match uh, those records with a matching response code. Um, now you might be thinking, hey, why don't we just do this client side so we don't have to go back to Athena with another expensive database query. Um, the reason is that because this table is doing server-side pagination, we actually don't have access in our application to all the records we need to filter down. So if we ran uh, a filter function on the data in this table right now, we'd only be filtering these 14 records that were returned by our query. So we have to do this server side. And incidentally, we're going to have to update our logic both to get the request records directly and also the total count of records. Because again, right now, we're just getting the total count of records in the data set, um, not the matching records to this criteria. So two, uh, two queries we're going to want to update here. Um, so the first thing we'll do is update our get requests query. Um, and to do that, we'll add in a where clause. Um, so we're going to say uh, where, and there's two criteria we need to check for. Um, the first is we need to check and see, um, is there a matching response code? Um, so we will say uh, we will get our ELB response code, which is the field in the database we'll be matching on. Um, and we want it to be equal to um, our uh, response code select value. Um, but there's a problem here, actually. This response code uh, in our data set is not cast as an integer. Um, and it, the query uh, engine is going to interpret this value as an integer because it is, uh, is a number. So we need to actually cast this to a large uh, or a big integer in order for this to work. All right, so let's go ahead and run our query. Um, so we should see that we get the right uh, records back here. And yep, it's matching 404. Um, the other thing we want to do is add a condition um, for a case where no response code is selected. Because um, if I were to null out this value, uh, none of the records are going to have um, a, a null value for the ES, ELB response code. Um, so we'll add another uh, criteria here. And we will say, um, or um, our response code select um, that it has a, a null value. So those are the two criteria um, that could possibly work for this query. Um, let's go ahead and do the same thing over in our request count query as well so we get the correct numbers. Um, so we'll copy our where clause and we'll bring it in here. 
So now if we were to check uh, once this query finishes, we should see that our count has updated and we've got the right number of pages of results. Um, and we're only gonna see results uh, that have a 404 in the response code. Whereas if we were to clear this out, um, we'll see that this reruns the query and shows all response codes and recalculates the total number of rows. Um, so now we've got our, our query logic implemented there. Um, the next thing I wanna show, uh, since we've got our, our filtering and our pagination working, is how we can do some uh, big data style visualization on top of this uh, on top of this data, uh, because uh, you know it's 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 great and all that we can show things uh, records in a table, but it might be helpful to analyze them in aggregate um, if we could do some visualization. So I'd like to show um, how we could do something like um, a distribution, uh, like a scatter plot of the number of bytes that were sent, um, just to give us a sense of kind of where the outliers are. That'd be really hard to do just paging through you know 1.3 million uh, request logs for a single day. Um, so in order to that, do that, we're going to want to get the distribution of sent bytes. Um, and so we will make a new query for that because, again, we can't really paginate that query. So we'll do a new Athena query, um, and we will say, we'll call this get sent uh, bytes distribution. And I'm going to bring this query in uh, just to kind of streamline our build process here. So we're going to get all the distinct sent byte values. Uh, and then we're going to count to see um, how many of each of them exist. So this is going to be an aggregation that we're doing. Um, and of course, we need to add in that same where clause as before. So let's go ahead and put this in here um, because we don't want to show um, distribution for uh, records that we filtered out. Uh, and we're going to want to group by one uh, so we can order that way. Um, and then we'll do order by order by one ascending. So we'll go ahead and run our query here, and we should see that we get back um, a bunch of counts of the different um, byte sizes. So uh, there's a lot of records here. Uh, well, that's one nice thing about Athena is it can do these sorts of big data queries very quickly for us, um, and then we can visualize the data inside of a chart component. So let's build out that component and wire up our data. So we'll bring in uh, a text label here, um, and we'll say this is a H3. And this will be our distribution of sent bytes. All right, and so now we'll bring in our chart component and let's go ahead and wire that up with our query results. So we can see it's already keyed off of the sent bytes distribution, but uh, let's go ahead and make this a scatter plot. And I wanna see um, X axis values for the count of the bytes there. Um, let's change our data set out as well. So we're gonna wanna get the sent bytes off of this data series. And uh, we'll relabel that. So we'll say sent bytes. And we don't want any aggregation in here. So that looks pretty good. Um, this is going to let us get some insights. So for example, we can see uh, we've got 393 requests where there were 103 bytes. Um, and then out here is this outlier where we've got you know, um, 423 requests where um, the sent bytes were. 3,476. So this is a, some nice information that we can analyze quickly. Again, large number of data points in here, um, but Athena has no problem um, processing all this data for us. Uh, so that's a, a real quick overview of what you can build out in Retool on top of Athena. Again, this is great for handling large volumes of data um, in a serverless infrastructure, and I uh, hope this was a useful walkthrough on, on how you can wire this up. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.